Y'all may remember from a previous episode I made on Sudan that 9 million people have been displaced by a violent tug of war of power and control. I also did an episode on the Democratic Republic of Congo, illustrating that since the end of the Rwandan genocide, which was Belgium's fault, for sowing discord between the Hutu and the Tutsi, different factions have been at war trying to take control over the region. 6 million people have been displaced there. Because the area is rich in resources like cobalt and copper and sits in the middle of high traffic commercial trade routes, France and the UK, America and many others have had a hand in escalating the crisis without providing any aid in any way, shape or form. Haiti has a similar story. Since the assassination of President Javina Moïse in 2021, opposing factions being called gangs in this moment have caused a recent wave of violence displacing near 200,000 people. And some of this can be traced all the way back to the 90s when Clinton destroyed Haiti's rice farming industry and their ability to self-sustain by forcing them to drop tariffs on imported subsidized rice. And on top of that, political turmoil has weakened the state capacity. Economic and environmental shocks have put 90% of Haitians under the poverty line, and 50% of them are facing crisis levels of food insecurity. And of course, there's Palestine, taking up most of the space on the world stage because for some time, we could actually see what was going on. And if I may, let's be honest, because those people are not black and are not located in Africa, everybody cares. There's an array of connection points between all of these crises. Colonization, racism, displacement, sexual violence, and intentional lack of media attention, human rights violations, but above all else, what connects them is an insidious greed for money, power, resources, and land. And we see it over and over again throughout all of history. It's an oppression playbook. And once you learn the signals, it becomes very easy to spot the plays being called, no matter where they take place. And if we're really keeping it hot, because of the failures and blind spots of the American experiment, America then taught a lot of these people everything they know. For instance, Hitler's Nuremberg Laws, which laid out the legal foundation to allow the Holocaust to take place, were directly inspired by the Jim Crow Laws that legalized brutalities against black people in America. And on the other hand, the way America has handled resistance has also influenced the rest of the world. Israel, even though it's beef right now, even had a Black Panther Party of their own. In the late 60s into the 1970s, a group of young Moroccan Jewish people started meeting to organize against the poor living conditions of African Jews living in Israel. So, I say all this to say there are oppressed people everywhere. And though the context and situations may vary, it's usually just the same horse of a different color. It's like Huey P. Newton said, we must gain security in ourselves and therefore have respect and feelings for all oppressed people. You guys are asking how can we use our energy for them and watch them potentially gain respect and protection we don't even have here? When the question should be, how can we allow ourselves to feel respected and protected and whatever progress made on our end while watching other oppressed people continue to live without any progress at all?